Okay, going to start now. Okay, uh, good day, everyone. Uh, welcome to this uh, presentation on OGC APIs, a suite of web API standards for handling and exchanging location data. My name is Kobe Hobana, and I work for the Open uh, Geospatial Consortium, also known as the OGC. Uh, the slides have been prepared in conjunction with Scott Simmons, OGC's Chief Standards Officer. So first, an overview of the OGC. Sorry, uh, an overview of the presentation. I'll introduce the OGC, um, and then I'll present an overview of the various standards after which I'll describe some of the deployment models that we have seen de um, um, uh, uh, deployed by various uh, developers. Uh, I will also uh, describe some of the innovation activities that um, we're using to help develop the OGC API standards. And I'll put forward some ideas for OGC API support in ASF projects. So first, an introduction to the OGC. Uh, OGC is a global consortium representing over 500 industry, government research, and academic member organizations. Uh, we are seen as the go-to uh, community for everything related to uh, location. Uh, we serve as a hub for thought leadership and innovation for all things related to location. Uh, we offer a neutral and trusted forum for tackling interoperability issues within and across communities. And we are seen as, uh, you know, as the go-to organization for consensus-based open standards uh, for location information. Our actively engaged community stretches across uh, commercial businesses, government, organizations and academia, providing unique benefits to each uh, stakeholder. Our members uh, include a variety of organizations um, and they create and use standards through OGC's many working groups and apply them across um, you know, various sectors and domains. Now, why are we interested in geospatial standards? Well, Location information is everywhere. It's often said that more than 80% of, um, of data that is used in decision-making includes a reference to some location. That reference could be, for instance, uh, geospatial coordinate. Um, and a whole variety of other ways of referencing location. Uh, more than 80% of data that is used in decision making has got some form of location reference information in, in it. And as a result, to enable the consistent exchange of that location information is important. It's important to ensure that there's interoperability between um, various uh, solutions that are used. Uh, across society. So we develop OGC standards um, and those standards uh, effectively what they do is they, uh, they provide a series of requirements. Um, and if you ask what is an OGC standard, well, it's a document established by consensus and approved by the OGC membership that provides rules and guidelines aimed at the optimum degree of interoperability in a given context. To develop those standards, we identify requirements uh, from the market as well as from our members and elsewhere. We also review and assess technology trends uh, in order to help us identify the uh, I ideal uh, approach for ensuring interoperability, for enabling interoperability uh, within a given context. We hold quarterly meetings, uh, and you, what you can see on the slide right now is a photo taken from an OGC member meeting back in March 2018. Um, obviously, with the pandemic, the meetings have uh, gone virtual. Um, so this gives you an idea of, uh, you know, of um, 
the participation at our quarterly uh, meetings. But as I mentioned earlier on, we have more than 500 member organizations. So uh, staff from those organizations uh, participate throughout the year um, to help develop these standards. So why develop standards for web APIs? Why OGC API standards? Well, APIs are a very popular and very effective enabler of rapid software development. And what we have found as, uh, as we reviewed the various implementations of web APIs uh, across the, the web, we, um, we observed that in some cases, variations of the elements that handle location um, can degrade um, location interoperability. If you have different web APIs um, and each one is implementing location handling in a completely different way, um, there can be some uh, inconsistencies when location data is exchanged between um, the solutions that implement those, um, those APIs. So, the OGC has embarked on a program to develop OGC API standards. Um, those standards especially enable uh, web APIs that provide consistent uh, requirements and they enhance geospatial interoperability between uh, web APIs. And there are a number of principles that we've applied as we've developed these OGC API standards. And those principles are listed uh, on this uh, slide. So first of all, we apply special data on the web best practices. These pra best practices were uh, specified collaboratively between OGC and the W3C, the World Wide Web Consortium. We also leverage the open API specification, um, specifically when um, when we uh, when we document the standards, we uh, we keep in mind that um, you know the implementers of those um, standards will use the Open API specification to describe the web APIs. So the specifications are designed uh, with the view um, of enabling web APIs uh, to be described using the open API specification. So using open API definition documents. So we publish the OGC, uh, we publish OGC API standards uh, along with examples of how conforming implementations can be described using open, uh, open API definition documents. Another key principle, Uh, friendly as possible. And we've organized the standards to, um, to be modular building blocks. Um, and that makes it possible for developers to pick the building blocks that they are most interested in to uh, address uh, particular needs. They can pick a building block and integrate that building block into their own web APIs. And all of the development of OGC API standards is being done publicly on public GitHub repositories. Our working groups um, actively engaging through GitHub repositories and discussing uh, some of the issues, discussing the issues around uh, draft standards and also publishing a variety of resources through there. And we encourage early implementations of these OGC API standards. Um, in order to help us um, collect feedback and to validate the uh, approaches uh, to enable developers to give us feedback uh, about what works and what doesn't work. So we're constantly encouraging early implementations of the OGC API standards. So what are those standards? On this slide is a... Um, a listing of all the various approved and candidate OGC API standards. The ones with the green border around them are those that have been approved uh, and others, the others on the slide are still in development. So starting from the top left, 
Um, OGC API Discrete Global Grid Systems um, specifies an interface for accessing data that has been organized according to discrete global grid systems, also known as DGGS. These are tessellations uh, of space across the globe into different levels of detail. OGC API records provides, uh, it specifies an interface for accessing metadata, metadata such as you would expect to find from a catalog. OGC API maps specifies an interface for accessing electronic uh, maps uh, and charts. OGC API styles specifies an interface for accessing symbology and styles and other portrayal information. OGC API tiles specifies an interface for accessing tiled resources such as map tiles and tiled feature data, also known as vector tiles. OGC API common specifies the foundation building blocks on which other OGC API standards are built. OGC API routes specifies an interface for accessing routing information, such as you'd expect to find from a transportation system, uh, routing information um, and algorithms uh, for um, to enable uh, end users to uh, calculate routes from uh, point A to point B. OGC API Environmental Data Retrieval, also known as the EDR API. Uh, it provides uh, an interface, it specifies an interface for accessing spatial temporal data such as trajectories, corridors, and other uh, data. OGC API Features um, specifies an interface for accessing vector feature data. OGC API processes specifies an interface for accessing implementations of algorithms uh, that have been wrapped in a web API. Uh, examples of algorithms, for instance, include flood modeling um, or buffering uh, or any type of process that can be wrapped in, a, um, in, an, in an API. OGC API coverages specifies an interface for accessing coverage data. Examples of coverage data include satellite imagery, uh, some meteorological data, and it's, as well as others. So those are examples of approved and candidate OGC API standards. And we've been developing these OGC API standards. Some of them uh, since 2017, and um, what right, um, is the roadmap as it currently stands. So, as I mentioned earlier, we've published um, OGC, we've approved OGC API features and also published uh, various parts from it. OGC API processes has been approved. Uh, we will be publishing it within a few weeks' time. OGC API environmental data retrieval has been uh, uh, approved and published. But you can also see uh, where the other specifications are uh, on the roadmap. We're expecting quite a number of them to be completed um, by the end of the coming year. Um, and uh, a few other concepts uh, will be completed in 2023. We are expecting a number of uh, additional concepts to be added to this roadmap over the next few months. Uh, for instance, um, we're expecting an activity around the OGC Sense of Things API, uh, which is a, an API uh, that has been developed for the Sensor Web and the Internet of Things. Um, and um, we're expecting to align it with other OGC API standards um, sometime next year. And we're seeing increasing impact of these OGC API standards across government, business, um, and, uh, and academia. And examples of that impact is the uh, adoption or the, yeah, ad 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 
the adoption of OGC API features by the International Organization for Standardization, also known as ISO. Uh, ISO has adopted OGC API features part one uh, under the name ISO 19168-1 uh, Geospatial API for Features. And we've also seen OGC API features adopted as a good practice by the Inspire community. Uh, the Inspire community is um, it's a community that includes uh, the European Union member states, uh, as well as a few other nations. And OGC API features has been adopted there as a good uh, practice as well. So we're seeing um, adoption of OGC API features across business, uh, government, as well as, as well as in other sectors. And to facilitate this adoption, uh, we've published a website that uh, offers a variety of resources, uh, including information about the API standards, as well as code sprints. There are some videos from, uh, from previous initiatives um, and, uh, and links to some blog posts and other documents that have been published by, uh, by the OGC. Um, so that's ogcapi.ogc.org. And as I mentioned earlier, everything has been done on GitHub in terms of our working groups developing the OGC API standards. So you'll find quite a variety of resources. You can ask questions on the issues board and members of the working groups will be uh, very happy to respond to the questions. We're also pub publishing open API definition documents. What you can see on this uh, slide is a screenshot from an open API definition uh, document that uh, presents example building blocks specified uh, according to OGC API features part one core. Um, on each GitHub repository, you'll find links to uh, some of those resources as well as on the OGC API. Um, .ogc.org website. So let's have a look at some of the resources that are offered by uh, some of the OGC API standards. OGC API features, which provides, uh, which specifies an interface for accessing vector feature data, um, offers a number of resources, including a landing page, a conformance declaration. The conformance declaration um, notifies, it tells the uh, client application, what capabilities the API supports. Um, and the, there's a resource for feature collections, which lists the data collections that that particular API uh, was. And there's a resource for accessing each feature collection uh, through a collection ID. Um, and um, and a client application can also access individual uh, features as well through a feature ID. Um, so this is an overview of the uh, resources that are uh, offered. You can also query the various um, uh, res features uh, as well um, through these uh, paths and, uh, and, and resources. So all of this, is specified in the standard and um, there are open API, open API definition documents describing the details of the APIs. And then for OGC API processes, um, this is a landing page, uh, a conformance declaration. You can immediately see the similarities with OGC API features and uh, other OGC API standards. They are uh, there's all, there are also resources for listing processes that are offered by that API, as well as descriptions of the processes. You can also execute the processes, so invoke them, um, and also monitor running process uh, processes through a job status info resource. Uh, you can access the results from a job, as well as to um, obtain information about the status of jobs or even um, delete a, a, a job. 
an overview of OGC API, uh, environmental data retrieval, some of the resources uh, listed on the slide. So there's a landing page and a conformance declaration, um, as well as an ability to query what collections are available from an implementation of um, the uh, EDR API. You can identify uh, collections of special, special temporal data and obtain information about those collections. And you can also query a resource uh, using any of the um, query types that are standardized by the environmental uh, data retrieval uh, API standard. And some of those query types include, for instance, area queries, um, trajectory queries, corridor queries, point queries, uh, as well as uh, others. Now, as for deployment models, we've seen a number of deployment models uh, implemented by uh, some of our by some of our members. For instance, uh, some of our members have uh, implemented. Um, uh, excuse me. Some of our members have implemented OGC API standards uh, as uh, part of. Uh, uh, I'll call it a, a single uh, solution uh, implementation, or sometimes called a monolith, uh, monolith approach. Uh, and that makes it possible to integrate um, implementations of OGC API common, tiles, maps, coverages, EDR, and features into uh, a single solution uh, in order to address a whole variety of end user needs. Um, as illustrated on the slide. Um, some of our uh, other members have implemented OGC API standards as microservices with each OGC API deployed inside a single container. Um, examples of containerization uh, technologies used include, uh, for instance, Docker uh, or even Kubernetes uh, and as well as uh, other um, even virtualization uh, solutions as well. So we've seen some deployments as microservices um, effectively uh, uh, implementing a, an architecture that looks uh, something like as shown on this slide. Now to help develop the OGC API standards, we're running quite a number of activities, including test bits, pilots, plug research projects, interoperability experiments, sprints, and hackathons. And um, our next major innovation activity will be OGC Testbed 18. Uh, so this will be an innovation activity running for approximately nine months. Um, some of the technology areas that have been identified for Testbed 18, um, although the testbed will not be limited to these technology areas, um, some of the um, technology areas include web API enhancements, machine learning and artificial intelligence, 3D data, augmented virtual reality, cloud native processing, linked data and semantics. There's a call for sponsors that's currently open and we expect to announce a call for participation in December this year. You can find out more at ogc.org. Our next OGC API virtual code sprint is going to be uh, from October 26th to the 28th, and it will focus on OGC API routes, OGC API discrete global grid system, and OGC API common. The um, the figures on the right hand side of the slide, um, you know, give you some idea of what um, OGC API routes, which uh, what it's all about, and OGC API discrete global grid systems uh, as well. So um, visit ogcapi.ogc.org to register. And from previous code sprints, we've seen implementations um, such as shown on these slides, for instance, uh, QGIS implementation of OGC API standards uh, and a Cherry uh, implementation uh, as well, uh, OpenSphere, um, as well as uh, a demonstration using uh, Jupyter Notebooks, uh, and also uh, another uh, implementation using Unity uh, 3D. These are some of the examples. Uh, obviously, QGIS uh, uh, and OpenSphere are open source uh, projects, um, and uh, QGIS is an uh, OSG or uh, open source geospatial foundation project. 
Other examples include Catalog Explorer by Hexagon um, and um, KubeSurf by KubeWorks, uh, GeoNetwork by OSGeo, uh, PyGeo API, another uh, OSGeo project, uh, and GeoServer, uh, another OSGeo project. We're seeing quite a variety of both commercial and open source uh, projects implementing OGC API standards. So we've put together some ideas uh, for uh, what Apache Software Foundation projects uh, could look to implement uh, using OGC uh, API standards. So ideas for OGC API feature support and ASF projects are listed on this slide. Um, one idea is for Apache SIS to publish vector data through OGC API features. Another idea is for Apache Jenna to ingest vector data from OGC API features implementations into Jenna Fuseki. Uh, another idea is for Apache Solar to enable spatial search through OGC, through OGC API features querying. Another idea is for Apache OFBIS to publish location reference product data through an implementation of OGC API features. Another idea is for Apache Kafka to enable subscription to updates made to data published through an implementation of OGC API features. Another idea is for Apache CalSite to handle special queries in the emerging SQL2 language, which is supported by OGC API features. Ideas for OGC API processes support um, in ASF projects uh, are listed on this slide. Uh, one idea is for Apache SIS to enable conversion of geospatial data between coordinate reference systems through an interface of um, through an interface conforming to OGC API processes. Another idea is for Apache UEMA to expose text annotators through an interface conforming to OGC API processes. Another idea is for Apache NiFi uh, to enable um, the invocation and monitoring of processing jobs through an interface conforming to OGC API processes. Another idea is for Apache MXNet to enable the invocation of deep learning algorithms wrapped in an interface conforming to OGC API, API processes. Uh, and another idea is for Apache Spark to enable the invocation and monitoring of processing jobs through an interface conforming to OGC API processes. And then ideas for OGC API EDR uh, support in ASF projects. Remember, EDR stands for Environmental Data Retrieval. So one idea is for Apache SIS to publish trajectory data through an implementation of OGC API EDR. Uh, another idea is for Apache Cayenne um, to expose spatial temporal data through an implementation of OGC API um, Another idea is for Apache to enable subscription to updates made to environmental data published through an implementation of OGC API EDR. Uh, and then another idea is for Apache Jenna to enable the ingest of data from OGC API EDR implementations into deployments of Apache Jenna Fuseki. And then finally, um, one idea is for Apache Solar to enable special search through OGC API EDR query interfaces. So in summary, OGC API standards are becoming a key requirement for web APIs offering location reference information. We are seeing a lot of uptake and implementation across government, uh, private, and academic sectors. We are seeing universities and other research organizations deploy and implement OGC API standards. We are seeing very large um, software vendors, um, you know, implement OGC API standards and offer them um, to their customers. We're seeing several uh, examples of that. So our recommendation for Apache Software Foundation projects is that those projects should start planning 
now how they are going to special enable their web APIs through OGC API standards. OGC staff and members are available to help advise um, those projects on which OGC API standards they can implement and which ones would be um, appropriate for various projects. Um, so we'd encourage you to get in contact. Uh, email address is shown on this slide. Please feel free to get in contact. The, there are several uh, members of the geospatial track at Apache, uh, at the Apache Software Foundation that are, you know, ex that are experts at OGC API standards. So we'd encourage you to uh, get in contact with them as well. Uh, and also to engage with us within the OGC as well as our members. Thank you for listening. I'm happy to take any questions.